Welcome back everyone, this is Arafelon playing Magical Bringer Corona, the movie. Last time, Subaru and the others arrived at Castle Belzimuth, and Belzimuth kind of dragged Subaru off to take a tour of the castle. You may remember that Corona took a tour with Rhyme. This will be a rather more informal tour, considering who's giving it. Amazing. Yeah, isn't it? Dragged by Belith-chan, I came to an extravagantly adorned corridor. Walls covered blue and gold shine with light streaming in the windows. The sheer beauty of it draws a sigh. Curiously, the fallen angel preens. This is the Tarkargan Corridor. The blue gemstone pillars are gifts from the Demon Lord Leviathan, I hear. Demon Lord Leviathan? Is that the Leviathan that's in the Bible? Yeah, that Leviathan. Belzebub's not the only demon lord. There's Lucifer, Asmodeus, and more. Seven demon lords rule over the demon realm. Seven demon lords? They all get along nowadays, but it seems there's turf wars now and then. Well, Leviathan's eternally neutral and next door, so she visits sometimes. I've met her a few times myself. What was this demon lord like? Um, if I had to pick a weird... Weirdo. Oh, I see. I just as soon not meet her then. And here? This is the Great Hall. Bellow's usually in back. Hey, Belith. I've told you not to come in here without good reason. You. We meet again, Subaru Yushiyumi. Chief Knight Bodyguard to Belzebeth, Kram Kruach. She's an assassin who attacked us in the earlier battles, along with Nyarwa Totep. Black magic, curses, poison. She's a ruthless demon who carries out her duty by any means necessary. At ease. I have no reason to fight you now that my liege has given up on the demon sword. I see. However, the other one would seem to have a reason. That's right, Nya. I'm practically running a bargain sale on reasons to fight. Thanks for yesterday. Oh no, the pleasure was all mine. It seems Nyo has something to repay you for from yesterday. Yes, I took the liberty of driving her off because she was sniffing around Belaschan. Ah, you fought her? No way, for me? I thought I told you, I'll protect you. Super What, again? Y'all, you lost going one-on-one -on -one with the human we just saw the demonling knock over? Yeah. It would seem I need to put you through training all over again. Huh? For serious? This is the courtyard ringed by the corridor. Wait, who's that over there? Ah, Yushiyumi-san. I'm an Ogawa senpai. What are you doing here? I'm looking at the garden. It struck me as being well tended. I see. Um, I'm sorry about earlier. Come on, Belith Chen. You apologized too. Hey, I already apologized. That one wasn't about to get you forgiveness. It's alright. I don't mind. See? Even Yuka senpai says so. Don't get carried away. <laughs> You're quite the big sister. What? Oh, I'm just talking to myself. By the way, Yoshimi-san, have you gotten to see the room you'll be staying in yet? Not yet. You should go look then. I'm sure you'll be surprised. Ah. Ooh, ooh, I'll show you. I'm sleeping the same room after all. Do you mind if I stop by later? No, feel free. I'll see you then. And we're back to the saloon already. This is the saloon you were waiting in earlier. Yeah, this is the guest room lounge. Once the maid's brought tea, I think you'll be having it here. Maid? You mean Rhyme-san? Well, there's lots of other maids, but I'd expect the bat to handle I guess Nobel brought here herself. She's the most important maid here. 
Hmm. But you should watch yourself. There's no telling what that bat's thinking. Is that so? She's a vampire. Get careless and you might wind up with your blood getting sucked. You could probably just sap her out of the sky with your thunder, though. Well, I'll show you the room. I'm sure you'll be surprised. I see. This is remarkable indeed. Luxuriously adorned walls, antique furniture, a double bed that could fit two adults with room to spare. It's like an expensive hotel suite. This is for the two of us? Yeah, it should be big enough. It's almost too big. Your place is just cramped. Japan does build small. Apartments designed for nuclear families are all the more so. But it isn't as though everyone in Japan can live in a place as vast as Amanagawa Senpai Shrine. And while I was thinking, Bella-chan had squatted on the floor as if she always did that and was rummaging through things. Ah, hey! Don't just go through my luggage! Looks like the bat brought it here. I'm checking for you to make sure she hasn't tampered with it. Ooh, the color of this underwear! Cut it out! Huh? What's this book? Heisenberg's World, The Uncertainty Principle, and Calm Forces? Kind of a convoluted title. Hey, I've only just started reading that, so leave it alone. I'd never read a book like that. Humans overthink everything and try to figure out the whole world into a bunch of numbers and logic. I bet that's why you've lost magic. Then, if we let go of numbers and logic, humans would be able to use magic? Sure. Pinkhead was actually using it. Yuka Senpai smelled of magic, too. Well, those two are... No way are they exceptions. Do birds think physics to fly? Do fish need logic to swim? Nope, it's all about feeling it, being what they are. You think about too much hard stuff. For all your smart, doesn't it just lead to overdoing it using that gray matter to brood over stuff? That's not such a good thing. I was surprised. We've only been together for a day, yet she sees right through me. I understand what she wants to say. I'm painfully aware of my weaknesses. But even so, I don't buy her optimism. If just feeling it let you use magic, no one would have any hardships. Yoshiyumi-san, are you here? I heard a knock on the door, followed by a kind voice that had a calmness. It's Amadogawa-senpai. Yes, it's unlocked, so feel free. Pardon my intrusion. Hmm, this room has a double bed. You said you were coming, but this is sooner than I expected. Gurna-chan and Rhyme-san came by shortly after you two. It's a bit early, but we're having tea. It looks as though everyone is gathering the nearby saloon. Oh, then you're here to call us. Thank you for going to the trouble. No, it's no hardship. My room sits crosswise from yours. Hmm, that close. Then is Sakura-senpai next to you? Gurna-chan is supposed to be a small outlying room. A small outlying room? I thought Sakura-senpai was closer with Noel than any of us, so why... <laughs> Probably because they're so close to each other. Uh, maidenly romance. Prime sense, since one of... Oh, excuse me. Tea is ready, everyone, so please proceed to the saloon. Yes, understood. I'll go go Kronogen, then. Ah, that's all right. You came to call us, so I'll go this time. You're sure? Yes, please go on ahead. Want me to come with? That's all right. I'll be right back. I'll save you a seat, then. Hurry up and fetch Pinko. Sakura-senpai is supposedly on this terrace. The wind blowing through is cool, and the view similarly favorable. For a demon lord's castle, it's unsuitably refreshing. Now, for senpai. There. For whatever reason, she's taking deep breaths and smiling happily. I understand that the breeze feels nice, but is it really enough to warrant this deep breathing with a full-faced smile? What are you doing? When I do this, see? He says magic energy pervades him. Magic energy? Yeah, the magic energy in the atmosphere. 
magic energy in the atmosphere? I don't feel a thing. Of course, the supernatural is outside my specialty. I might ask Amanagawa Senpai later, but for now, I'll finish my business. Ah. <sighs> Be that as it may, Senpai, it looks as though the preparations for tea are complete. What? Really? Why would I lie about it? Everyone's waiting. Yay! Then let's go! Her smile rose from 100% to 120%. Her appetite's bigger than you'd think. Now that she's heard about tea, she can scarcely contain her glee. Must be nice to enjoy life like that. Kurunasama, right this way. Rime-san was showing Sakura-senpai to a seat when I entered the saloon. Amanogawa-senpai, Belthachan, and even Noel are seated around the table. Drinking tea as a vampire beard at the same table as a demon lord? Perhaps it's typical for the demon realm, but I find it quite an unwary and indolent spectacle. If it weren't for the teapot and cart holding the sweets upside down on the ceiling, anyway. Seeing that I had sat down next to Belthachan, Rime-san poured tea in the direction of the ceiling. She must be able to freely decide the extent of the gravitation she speaks of controlling. The tea poured into the cups shows no signs of falling, and viewed from below could be mistaken for gelatin. But rising from the gelatin up there, or rather falling, the white steam drops like the smoke from dry ice. I get the impression washing it for long enough would make it feel like we're the ones standing upside down. Soon, once all the tea and snacks are ready, they simultaneously sing up the ceiling and flipped over in midair. Finding on the table, they line up as perfectly ordinary afternoon tea. An impressive performance. Sassafras tea and wild berry clafatis. That line completes it perfectly. The three humans, myself included, have been struck dumb. In a reversal from earlier, steam rises to the ceiling from the tea. The French pastry is evenly sliced. Their dramatic magical entry makes them seem larger than life. Wow, looks tasty. Time to eat! Visually satisfied, Sakura-senpai picked up the cup and took a sip. And another sip. And another. And another. An oddly fast pace. Is it safe to drink this tea? Even assuming wild berry clafo tea is literal, sassafras tea is unfamiliar. What kind of plant is it? I feel like I may have seen it in a culinary book. And yes, I just double-checked, and that is supposed to be pronounced clafouti, typically in English-speaking countries. It's from French. I was elbowed from the side. Looking, I see Belichan putting her teacup to her mouth while sending me a sidelong glance as a signal. Watch me. She said nothing out loud, but seemed to be saying that. At my slight nod, Belichan takes a tip of the tea and lowers the cup. Then, a bite of clafouti. Now she makes eye contact. And again, a sip of the tea, a bite of clafo tea. Alternating the tea and clafo tea. I suppose there's some meaning to it. I nodded again and picked up the cup. And, like Bella Chen, took a sip of tea and a bite of clafo tea. Across from me, Amanagawa Senpai had also noticed and began imitating. The taste, no complaints. In fact, it's one of the tastiest confections I've ever eaten. The curiously flavored tea, too, has its own exquisite sort of bitter flavor. How is the level of sweetening? Yeah, it's just perfect. The tea has kind of a mysterious flavor. Sassafras bark seeped in soft water with azalea nectar for the finishing touch. Sassafras bark? Azalea nectar? A decoction of poison, as it were. It has the medicinal effect of causing vitality to swell. You may experience the urge to drink many cups, but you will lose the ability to preserve your right mind if you over-imbibe, so please exercise caution. Wh what See? I knew it. My gut was right. After all, a dubious maid who drops from the ceiling to startle people on a first meeting isn't about to serve normal tea. Be at ease. The poison is weak. For humans, the medicinal effect is overstrong, and no worse side effects than causing madness will manifest. Sakura Senpai's expression suddenly changed. She must have fallen into a panic from the overly strong effect. Good grief, that's what you get for jumping into things without the least bit of wariness. Ah, she bit into the coffee tea in great haste, having perhaps finally caught on to the trick. Sweet! 
such bliss. With a euphoric smile, Senpai regains her composure. She looks like the Tanuki from Kachikachiyama after diving into a river to put out the fire on its back. I really never want to be like that. Kachikachiyama is a Japanese folktale involving a particularly vicious tanuki. They're also known as Japanese raccoon dogs, despite being either. Uh, a rabbit friend of a couple victimized by this tanuki takes up a vendetta against it, finding various ways to torment it, all while pretending to be its friend. Uh, one of these involves setting up a bundle of kindling that the tanuki fires on its back on fire, then claiming that these crackling noises are from the supposedly nearby Kachikachiyama, literally crackling mountain. While often portrayed as sneaky, Tanuki are not known for being terribly bright. I then has realized the significance of the Klafuti. Significance? The yin-yang opposition we talked about earlier. While drinking tea that excites the mind, eat sweets that calm the mind. Wild berries have an especially strong tranquilizing effect. Oh, I get it. The side effects cancel out and it comes out just right. Quite right, everyone who have cleared the first hurdle. Please think of this as a demon-style welcoming. First hurdle? So she was testing us? Expressly and in front of her liege. No, Noel might have given the order. But what for? It seems a bit much for entertainment. Chen, thank you for instructing me earlier. No biggie. In any case, having invited guests to drink such a dangerous tea, what was the purpose of that? Guessing you, I guess. Was that really necessary? Yeah, it's a demon lord's castle. You can't really get in these places without certain qualifications. If they don't test you a little, it turns into a reputation thing. Poison tea to preserve the order? I find it a difficult action to comprehend. Hey, you're grimacing and thinking about hard stuff again. Take things more positively. I'd certainly love to, but that would just mean repeating old mistakes. I've become a pretty distrustful person, but next to the way Sakura Senpai humiliated herself earlier, I much prefer my way. Everyone here? Yuka Chan, Noel Chan, Krom Sun. Here. Indeed. Mm. Alice Chan, Super Chan. Right here. I'm here. How wonderful that everyone has their own personal response. After tea, we were invited to go to the ocean by Sakura Senpai. I had wanted to look around the castle a bit more, but Bella Chan kept insisting on going, so here we are, yet. Uh, Senpai, I heard that we're going to the ocean, but what I see around your neck, don't tell me. It's a swimsuit! Ugh, she intends to go swimming. How can she throw away all caution like this so soon after being served poison tea? Is she trying to fall Kachikachiyama with the hair of Inaba? That is another Japanese folktale, Inaba no Shiro Usagi. It involves a hare who wants to cross between islands, so he tricks the sharks into lining up as a bridge under the guise of counting them to see whose clan is larger. And not content simply to take advantage of them, he starts to mock them before he's finished the crossing, and they retaliate by ripping out all his fur. To make matters worse, a malicious passerby who's feigning concern tells the hare to wash in the sea and dry off in the sun, which leaves him badly chaps, and that's made worse by the salt. Now luckily for the hare, there's a more benevolent passerby who provides a better solution in the end, but in the end, the hare does resolve to avoid tricking others in the future. No, I can tell that by looking. You're swimming in a demon realm ocean? The water temperature ought to be quite fine at this time. It's not a question of water temperature. It's fine, Subaru. You swim too. It'll get dark if you keep making that face. Come on, move, move! 
is the scene should be looking familiar again, but as you may recall, Belleth again drags Subaru off to another part of the beach. So we will be seeing a different part of the scene in addition to a different perspective. A Demon Realm Ocean As if to portray the mood of those words, blue ocean spread before me. Giving Amanogawa senpai her clothes, Sakura senpai rushed into the ocean, clad in her swimsuit. The house stands by the water's edge, with Krom following after her. It's the very image of tranquility, like a resort's private beach. It appears that I was the only one to have been gripped by paranoia. See? For all your hard thinking, this is how it turns out! My expectations just happen to be mistaken this once. So stubborn! To keep that up, you won't be able to enjoy what's supposed to be fun! Hurry it up and come swimming! Hey, Bella-chan, at least take your clothes off. Doesn't matter, they're just dry out anyway. Sending up sprays of water, Bella-chan frolics around. Not caring that she's totally soaked, she just innocently laughs and plays. Why does this feel so nostalgic? Oh, I once laughed like this too. When did I let go of that? My honest feelings were everything. I never hesitated to be myself. I was able to just live. My abandoned childish side? I'd begun to have doubts eventually. I lost faith and hope, and all that grew up along with my body was a dissatisfaction with society. A monochrome world. Harsh reality. I understood the meaning of these words that came along in rock music, resenting it every time a politician bowed his head. No, no, I don't want to grow up. The more you live clinging to that thought, struggling, plotting escape, the closer you get to adulthood. There's water in my ear! A particularly large wave broke, carrying a sp conspicuous someone. Kurana Sakura. She succeeded at growing up while staying a child, gained the power of magic, and befriended a demon lord. <laughs> You're such a thickhead! I... I'm trying to catch up with them. I aspire after Amadogan Senpai's character and Sakura Senpai's innocence. I haven't been able to win. There's not a thing I'm better at. I was number one in sports and number one in tests. So what is it that I'm lacking? The difference between me and them? See? It really is safe, right? Yes. Different. I couldn't do that. Wearing a school swimsuit to swim in the ocean at this age? Oh, and the school years are you written? Either she wrote it wrong or she's wearing the same one as last year. Oh, the name's so badly done, too. Starting off with too much energy, then realizing there's no space to finish is a typical failure pattern. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. That's rude. Talk. Yes, I'd better say something. Yeah, if you look at Karna's swimsuit closely, you'll notice there's the school year there, scribbled out with a two on top of it. And then her name. You have Sakura Koro, and then Na is kind of squeezed into the corner here. It certainly is safe. The way here was clear, too. They at the castle drive off all the monsters around this area. Even dragons won't come near here when the sun's out. The demon lord drives off the monsters? Well, duh, it wouldn't be very convenient for them living there to have ferocious critters running around near the castle. The shores are lifeline for the elves and fairies around here. I hear it's to protect them, too. Ha, ah, such a softy demon lord. An unexpected tale. Who'd have guessed the atrocious demon lord Belzebuth would protect anything besides herself? Belleth, I will not permit such words before me. Oh no, it's the demon lord Slapdog is here. I hate black, it's too stubborn to dry any car. What you gonna do if I won't take it back? Strike me down? Huh, throwing your weight around when you can't even take me down? You protect elves and fairies, how come you can't move one little me? Subaru, let's go over there! Belichan, hold up! Venting her unbearable feelings, Belichan abruptly ran off. No, I hadn't come to the demon realm to drink tea and have fun, though I'd almost forgotten with everything that happened. I... my purpose in coming here...
Well, it's Jen. I know. I went too far. Hey, can I ask you something? I was worried. Worried about what kind of treatment you were suffering at the hands of the Demon Lord. But now that I'm actually here... You seem to have your run of the castle, and the demons don't behave like they did in the human world. So, what's going on here? Tell me the truth, Bella Shan. Fine, I'll tell you. But listen close, because I don't want to have to say it twice. And keep it between us. Don't tell Pinkhead or Yuka-senpai. Okay, I promise. Then I'll talk. Way long ago... I heard Noelle talking with one of her people. They said, I'm not supposed to exist. I'm not an angel or a demon, but a gray area that shouldn't be here. An absolute neutral has no place. That's what they said. She shouldn't exist? Neutrals have no place? What could this mean? Apparently Noelle couldn't bear to just watch, so she took me in. It's not even funny. If... If I accept that sort of sympathy, then that means I really am an unwanted child. This must be what she didn't really want to talk about. Tears spilled from the fallen angel's eyes. Well, Chen, do you remember anything about your father or mother? No, I, I don't know anything about them. So why? Uh, uh. So why? Why do I have to feel this way? She'd have continued if an upwelling of emotion hadn't cut her off. How terrible. When I lost my parents, Akira-san was there for me. A father's large hands, a mother's warmth, I still had these happy memories I'd accumulated, too. But this girl has nothing. Knowing nothing, all on her own, and left in a place like this? If I'm just going to lose everything I've been given, I'm better off not having anything to begin with. That's what I declared the day of my showdown with Sakura-senpai? How, how would that be better off? Just look at how the girl right in front of you is suffering. You're horrible. You should be ashamed of yourself, Subaru Yoshiyumi. You did well to get through talking about that. Thank you, Bella-chan. I leaned over her and stroked her small head. This makes the second time I've comforted her like this. I promised you I'll protect you. Subaru! You're not an unwanted child. As long as I'm here, I won't let you feel like you're all alone. See? Your magical girl big sister came to save you, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Good job sticking it out. It's okay. I'll be here for you. The small body I embraced was cold and wet from the ocean water. I'm getting wet too, but I don't mind. For now, I just... Subaru! <laughs> it's okay now, Bella Chen. <laughs> Unable to hold it in any longer, Bella Chen burst the dam of her feelings in my breast. Yes, cry all you need to, since I've stopped crying. I'll at least accept another's tears. With the waves and a sobbing child, faint memories replay in my mind. Yes, when my family was down to just me and Akira-san, I cried in his arms, too. And this is a good place to stop for now. There's a bit more that happens at the beach before we go back to the castle, but this recording's gone on pretty long, so uh, for now. This has been Arafelon playing Magical Bringer Corona the movie, The Wings of Pleiades Arc. Come back next time, we'll continue and meet Novaithan again. Hope to see you then.